Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome back to Drumlin Diner. So, this is the first of a kind of two part, two video thing. As uh, I did a couple of builds here, and uh, they were a bit over long for one video, so I've split them up. But we're going to work on this little area here. I'm going to pour a bit of the fence out in just a moment. It occurred to me that we've got four, M four NPCs, even, living here in uh, Trudy and Patrick and Wolfgang and Simone. And whilst they all hang out by the diner, they haven't actually got anywhere to actually live or anywhere to go to sleep or anything. So I thought I'd bring, build them a couple of houses. So we're going to have a look at Trudy's first. And we're going to work on putting it up here at the top. My feeling was that uh, Wolfgang and Simone in particular are not really uh, sort of permanently located here. Although they sort of end up that way once you've uh, resolved the situation peacefully. But they're kind of... Trudy I don't think would be that comfortable with having them right underfoot. So I've got them living outside the walls. But Trudy and Patrick are going to have their place more inside or rather part of the wall. So that's what we're looking at. So my initial attempt was rather boxy and horrible. So I got rid of that. And we're going to start off with this uh, USO added sort of cut off corner section of uh, wall and roof and build off that. So an extra wall and roof here that we're just going to group select together as unfortunately this piece we're standing on now doesn't actually snap, which is kind of inconvenient, but in a sense it gives us a bit more freedom as well. So good old concrete pillar and we'll maneuver that into place. It's going to be a little cramped and uh, hard to work around in here, but uh, Kind of works with the improvised vibe. Fits in with the wasteland. And it's somewhat inspired by, if not directly, at least the spirit that uh, Bethesda use when they're designing their buildings in the game. There's uh, plenty of places you could find something at least sort of similar to this kind of a build. See that second piece there snaps on okay. This one, once again, is going onto the uh, main base piece, so that won't. This piece, incidentally, is um, the main body of the shack at County Crossing, uh, one that the two farmers there live in. Uh, so it's added by USO, as I say, that provides well, something a little different to work with. So we'll get this one into place. We have a slight build order issue here, in that, as you're about to see, once it's in place, because it's too close to the other pieces, I can't actually get these end pieces to snap on. So, pull them out. One, two, and we'll put it back again. As this is going to be part of the outer wall, as usual when I do this sort of thing, I've used solid back wall pieces rather than anything with a sort of balcony or window on it along the back of the building, which is where we're looking now. So not much light coming in from outside from that angle, but across the front there you can see I've used a, a more balcony styled piece. Slight bit of issue with it hitting the ground there, so... We'll nudge the thing up. So I'm building it just down the hill outside of uh, the main sort of Drumlin car park area. Just because um, building up on the top's getting a little difficult now with everything around there. And group selecting is a little uh, awkward. I ended up catching the fences a few times with some of the other stuff I did that you'll see in the next part. But uh, down here we've got plenty of room to work. And uh, once this fiddly individual wants to go into place, there we go. We have a nice solid unit that we can just group select all together and put into place in one go. So we'll close up the gaps. Don't quite like the look of that one. That's going to be inside the settlement, so I thought I'd make it a little bit more open. Close this one off, it's going to be the main room. Again, can't snap into this place, so just nudge that carefully in. Fortunately, these half walls are reasonably soft on the edges, so they're easy enough to get into place. A little bit of adjustment. I would have liked it to sit a little closer in, but it seals the gap just fine, so... Same thing around this side. Hop up in there. Just nudge this one into place as well. A little bit temperamental, not quite high enough there, I don't think. There we go. 
pull it down so it looks like it's actually resting rather than floating. And there we go. So I grab the whole thing with a concrete pillar. Just like that. And we'll nip up top. So in a sense this is quite an easy build. But uh, my initial attempt, as I say, was somewhat boxy because I just used the natural snapping of the pieces I was using and used some uh, foundation pieces to get over this guardrail here. But uh, this allows a lot more flexibility doing things this way. You can position things much more freely and whichever way you like. As you can see just through the doorway there, I'm making sure that the rocks there aren't clipping through the floor. We have it basically in place. However, it's somewhat floaty, so some adjustments will need to be made. Also some support put in, rather. But we'll complete the main structure first, now that we've got it in place. We'll grab a warehouse floor, and I'm just going to build a little balcony out front, give them somewhere to sit and hang out. Not that they actually will, but... The thought's there, that's what counts. So this was a little awkward. I initially tried to do it with the... It's going to be two pieces long, and I tried to do that group select the whole thing in one go. But because the front edge isn't actually quite a straight line, we ended up with a large gap in it where I didn't really want one, so... We'll group select the large one in there first. And that just snaps on, it clips ever so slightly through, but it makes it look like it's better connected there, so... There we go. So, these shack floor supports I think are pulled out of Hangman's Alley, that one uh, shack in the corner that's there initially. It's slightly odd supports underneath. Uh, they're added by USO and are somewhat temperamental. Snap into the ground as you can see there. Or rather, you can't see more to the point. So you need a, one of the taller pillars, generally, to lift it out when your group selects it. But in this case, because it snaps so low into the ground, I can't do anything with it because the bottom of the pillar isn't below the level of the support. So I'll nip outside again and use the slope here when it wants to play ball. There we go. So a little bit of trial and error getting this to work. There we go. We can now see what we're doing. Position that post in. The bottom of it is definitely below the level of the support there. We can just manoeuvre it into place now. The top edge on these is a little hard. So sometimes when you're group selecting it in, it won't actually match up with the bottom of the floor. I think it's more the case with the vanilla pieces than with these modded ones. But it works okay. Bar for the fact we can't see through the bush, but... It does mean that when it turns red, so we will in just a moment, there we go, you can already see it's too high. So as soon as it turns green, you know it's connected. Oh, it looks like it is anyway. There we go. Solid. I'll just take another look at it again. There we go. Take that in. Grab it with a pillar. And we'll move around the back. This is a bit awkward because these rocks are somewhat temperamental, particularly in the middle here, about where they'll uh, allow the pillar to sink in. I'm sort of moving back a little bit here so I can see this right-hand end. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly lined up with the edge of the piece when it's in the centre, but obviously I don't want it sticking out of the side. So there's a bit of frustration and adjustment. We're getting there. Come on, play ball. There we go. We'll just turn the piece a little bit now, I think. Yep, move it down. There we go. Nudge it forward again a little bit. There we go. As I say, somewhat awkward in that particular position. So we can put some supports on for the balcony now. I wanted to use something a little bit different. The drawback to using the pieces we've just used is particularly with the floor that you can see through, the mesh floor here, is it doesn't look like it's properly supported or it just clips through one or the other, or both. So I'm going to use these wire fence posts just to mix things up. The barn supports will probably look a little more sturdy, but they don't quite blend in with everything else, and it's just a little too blocky and perfect, I guess. I like the kind of rough, unfinished look of these posts. So we'll put four of them in there, give it a little bit of extra support, and there we go. Now as the characters that are going to be living here basically won't use the place anyway, it's more of a lore uh, sort of um, headcanon thing, this build. 
I'm going to do something a little different with the staircase. Uh, I can get up, but they probably wouldn't path up. There we go. So we're just going to build an improvised one out of the boxes, and it kind of matches up with a bit of debris and rubbish to the right there. So line that up. There we go. Just use a few different sizes so they stack up at different heights. And then we have uh, something that vaguely resembles a staircase, at least. There we go. Not particularly fancy, but it works. So we're just going to put this board behind here, so you don't look like you're running straight off the end of it. Make it feel like a slightly more finished article. A little difficult to group select this in, so we've not got a lot of room to work with. Guardrail and the building getting in the way, but... A little bit of trial and error and careful positioning of the pillar. There we go. Rough and ready. But it's in keeping with the rest of the staircase. So there we go. So, now we need to plug the gaps in the wall. I actually put a uh, little bit of wire fence across un the underside of the building at the back, which I haven't shown you. Just to uh, make it look like nobody's going to be crawling through there, particularly anything like a mutant hound or a feral ghoul. But for the gap, we're going to go with an oldie bit of goodie and just plug it up with a stack of tyres once I manage to actually group select them. Dead easy. Group select, position it on top, lift it up a little bit. There we go. One full stack of tyres, as if by magic. So the good thing about the rounded edges on these is you just sort of push them in place until uh, they meet the two sides, and then it just plugs the gap quite neatly. So there we go. So I wanted to use this car uh, just for the sake of using something a little different in the walls here, which I hadn't done before. But it's somewhat temperamental to use. We're going to use a combination of the rug and pillar as per standard. So we'll drop a rug down, use the large one because we're using a very large object. Lift it up in the air a little bit. It's slightly awkward to get this positioned. Because I think the connection point is on that metal pole nearest to us. So it's rather off centre, which makes sometimes you can have a slight collision issue with the rug. So if the rug's hitting the objects either side, then it sort of defeats the object of doing the rug glitch. But we'll grab it with the pillar and position it here. Actually winds up being not quite where I want it to be. It's a little too far left. There's a bit too much of a gap on the right there, and it's uh, the collision's a bit obvious with the piece next to it, so we'll try and adjust it. Unfortunately, it's being uncooperative again. Fortunately, I'd planned for that, so we can actually reach the rug. So that's what we will do. Just drop it over here so it'll play ball. And there we go. Much better. Got a bit of a gap there, but I'll just uh, group select a few barrels in behind that, and that'll plug that up quite nicely. So let's take a look around the decorated article, shall we? Yeah, quite happy with how well it looks like it belongs. It just fits in with everything else quite nicely. Naturally seems part of the overall design of the place. Fairly basic little balcony. So I had wondered about maybe um, acknowledging Trudy's former partner or late partner or whatever it may be, Patrick's father, who is obviously not around at this stage, but uh, the wasteland being a dangerous place, I assume he's probably met an unfortunate end. But we don't know how long they've actually been in this location or whether or not they moved there relatively recently. So given the confined space, I thought I'd uh, skip over that idea. So this is Patrick's bedroom. Little dining area for them. And there we have it. Nice little compact home for them. Sadly, they won't use, but at least we have a, a law friendly, RP friendly concept there. So, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, I'm sure you know what to do by now. If you'd like to support the channel directly, you can find information down in the description. And I'll be speaking to you all very, very soon.